Uh, welcome back to the next chapter in the build of the Focke Wolf 190. Now you may be asking yourself why the hell has he got a hat and sunglasses on? Well a lot of people know me but a lot of people know me by sight and when I'm flying wearing my hat and my glasses. And Paul Johnson, a frequenter of the uh, modelflying.co.uk forum, didn't recognise me in the earlier videos, so I've put my hat and my sunglasses on, hoping that he will now remember who I am. He also said I looked too old in the previous videos, so uh, I put my hat and sunglasses on in the hope that I look somewhat younger. Back again and now suitably attired without the, the hat and sunglasses and hopefully Paul now will uh, reconcile the two different images and understand that it is actually me doing the filming. Anyway, let's turn our attention now back to the build. Get on wide. Now one of the things that I've noticed, obviously the fuselage is now dry, all of the formers the sides, let's just take those out, they're all dry, mounting block dry and so on. But in doing a dry assembly of the <coughs> top formers for the top decking here, I along with others have noticed that when you put the sides top deck, whatever you want to call it, up against the fuselage there where they're going to go against, the front is going to go against the notch that's in F2. And in fact, what I should point out again, and sorry remiss of me, is that there is a, or are doublers that go on former F2. There's this doubler here, which is the, uh, the doubler that supports the sides and underneath there's also a small doubler there and that gives the former more support for mounting the balsa block that comes forward to give some support to the front cowl ring or F1. And it also adds a bit of support for where the leading edge locating dowel leading edge of the wing obviously locating down pushes through the former so there's a bit of strength so I added those doublers off camera uh, just to save a bit of time so anyway, coming back to what I was talking about when you mount the sides the top sides into the slot that that doubler forms you'll notice that hopefully I can show it there that there is a gap here between the crutch and the fuselage sides there which means that there's no be no support for this section of the fuselage side a bit of a weak area so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut some balsa out to mount on top of the crutch here that will stick out and give an edge onto which the top sides can mount. Now I said earlier in one of the videos to keep the offcuts from the kit and to this end the offcuts for the sides, that's the, the top, have got a nice chunk of balsa here which we can utilise for this part of the build. There is another doubler to go in place by the way uh, alongside or in the front of F4 well it's actually called F3 and when you mount that, I'll pull that out because I'm not stuck, when you mount them or stick them together you'll notice that it forms a slot there and F3 actually overlaps here F4 
And the reason for that is that if I can hold this up to the camera in my hand rather than on the actual fuselage itself, what is going to happen is that the side sits in that notch there, you'll see it there, fits in the notch, but the back of that side there fits behind the overlap of that front former there. So that neatly locates the side, and I keep referring to it the side, it's the top side we're referring to now, it neatly locates it on that former. So you, one of two things you could do, you could glue that together before mounting it onto the fuselage, or you could mount F4 on the crutch first of all, and then once that's dry, stick the doubler in place. Personally, I'm going to glue them together as they are, and I can then clamp them together quite easily all the way round them before I stick them onto the crutch. So I'm going to do that now off camera. So whilst that, those formers are drying this F3 and F4, I'm going to start to measure up to cut out the balsa to sit on the deck here, coming out to the line that that the fuselage side makes, which is there to there. You can see that line there. Let's just move it onto camera. So it's going to follow that line. You can just see that triangle. So we're going to form a triangle. I'm going to put the, the balsa on the crutch leading up to, or butting up to, the cutout in the crutch rather than, I don't want to cover it all in because there's no point. If it was further back that would be fine because that could be the deck for the cockpit, but it's not. So the first thing I'm going to do, because this is at an angle, I'm just going to run my pencil along the former there and that gives me the, <coughs> the angle of the cut necessary. I've drawn the lines on the crutch where the formers will finish and I've measured from there to the outside edge which is 20 mil so I need to continue the line I hold that there continue that line up there but I'm going to do that obviously after I've cut the the angle let's get my big cutting mat only because I don't want to disturb you know who sitting on the corner. I noticed his eyes lit up as soon as I got the scalpel out. He's a bit of a devil. So let's just trim off now that the edge of that balsa where the angle is cut. So where the angle needs to be cut to fit up against the former F2, push that into place, nice fit there. Now what I need to do now is to continue the line of where the former doubler will go, which is there. So that's going to sit against the doubler to form, in other words, F3 that sits there against F4 there. Again, cut that off. And hopefully, they'll be identical. Each side will be identical. Let's just see. I said it's going to be 20 mil from there to the edge 
there that I need to cut it to. So let's mark up 20 mil on there. Just putting it back on the crutch and just marking here <clears throat> where the notches that the um, fuselage side will go to. Bear in mind this has got to be the inside of the fuselage side. So you can imagine it, if that's the fuselage side, that line there needs to be on the inside and not the outside of that fuselage side there. Not actually happy with that measurement of 20 mil there because you can see that the fuselage side is going to come in there and that's where it's going to go. So all I did there was say well okay this is the same thickness as the fuselage sides here, the top is, so the inside is going to come to where the fuselage side sits there. So that's the line I'm trying to draw down there or cut. may sound terribly confusing but once you get into the build you'll see what I mean and thanks to Eric on the forum who pointed this out is missing so that's going to fit in there like that and give the side support you'll notice there where let's get my pencil where that edge is sitting the width of the fuselage side back because the top is going to fit along there, hopefully. So let's repeat that for the other side and I'm just going to make sure it does marry up. Which it does so I can copy that onto this off cut of the same balsa, the same sheet. So if I line it up obviously I've got the same angles that I had before. I'm not going to cut against that with the blade because it could cut into that as I'm as I'm working my way down so just pull the blade there and again remembering what I said before about lighter cuts are better than one heavy cut so we should now have two identical pieces which they are I shouldn't really sound surprised because it's all logical, fairly straightforward what we're doing here. I'm not going to stick these in place yet, I'll wait until this former is in place before I stick these because I may need to trim these a little bit and it's easier to move everything out of the way just to, to get it in place. Now I used Superfatic to glue these two together on the because I used Superfatic Hopefully, it'll be dry because in the first, the first video, I think it was the first chapter, superfatic can be compared to super glue in the speed at which it it goes off. So um, it is very quick, quick drying. But advantage is you can wash it off your hands with water, wash it off your fingers. There. So that sits in there neatly, there, and if I just hold that up to camera you can see there how that fits in and from the outside you can see where it gives me that triangle to infill when I put the sides in place. So I'm happy with that, so what I'm now going to do, I'm going to stick those top formers in place on the fuselage clutch, crutch, crutch, 
and it's got even colder in the workshop today. I think the temperature is about two or three degrees. So everything is flowing slowly, including my speech. Make sure you're getting the right way around. That's why I've marked them F3 and F4. The overlapping piece of the doubler goes to the front. Remember that the, the top side is going to fit into that recess there. So I'll stick that in place, push it down, and I'm going to do the same with the rear form, which is F6, that sits at the back of the, uh, the cockpit canopy. So I'm going to glue that in place. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Well, if you want to see me put glue onto a piece of ply. Who knows? Uh, move that around the other way so that the writing can't be seen. The cockpit. With that, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to use my little skewer and just run the glue off there. I don't like seeing blobs of glue. I don't mind a nice line of glue, but I don't know, there's something about me that, um, there's a lot of things about me, but this one in particular, I just don't like seeing blobs. So finally, before I do anything else, I'm going to make sure that they are vertical. Keep them plumb using my engineer's triangles here. Put one down on the back. Just make sure that they are vertical. Lay that one down like that. That one's fine. Okay, it's there. Yep. Okay, so I'm going to let those dry now, and when they have dried, I'm going to fit the side pieces because once that's done, I can then fit the top. Now, one thing I did say, well, another thing I did say, not one thing, I'm saying a lot of things in a previous vid was that the motor I'm going to use was one I happen to have lying around, which is the E-Flight Power 25, this one here. I'm conscious of the fact that I'm doing this video, or these videos, aimed primarily at newcomers to building, who might not have a stash of offcuts of balsa, who may not have spare motors like that laying around. So what I've done is I've ordered an Overlander 3548 motor, uh, 800 kV I think it is, which is the one that we think is a good fit for this model running on 4S. And on the basis of that, and a lot of people may be buying that motor, I'm going to use that and fit that to my model as well. So if you do go out and buy that motor, you'll see what I'm doing. And if you follow that, you hopefully won't go too far wrong or if I go wrong you'll see what I've done wrong and you won't make the same mistake. 